Hi. We're doing another step on this quail cage. What I did is I had a divider in here for the rabbits. So what I did is I cut a hole so the quail can get in there. Now, uh, when you cut any wire like that, leave yourself a, enough wire like I did over here for the door. And I left the prongs in place. That's where your pliers come in handy. You want to make these so that they're not, uh, you don't have, use this little hole right in the top there. Slide it up over there. Okay. First few are going to be a little difficult. And you bend them right down with the, bend them down with the pliers. You don't have anything, that when you reach in there, you're not getting scratched or cut. And neither are the birds. It's a little easier if the door is bigger than the pliers. This is what you do. You bend it down and pinch them together. See? And uh, I'll have Ruthie pause it. And when I get this all done, we'll start it right back up. And I'll show you how it worked. Come up and I'll show you. Now, I'm going to have a feeder here and a feeder over here. So I cut the opening out for the feeder. And I also cut the opening for the door. Now, if you notice, I, I cut these long and bent these up. Now you can reach in there without getting all scratched up and bruised. And even the children, if, you, if you're making this into either a rabbit cage or a quail cage or a chicken cage or whatever. Now, this door is big enough for me to reach in and collect eggs. And also high enough so when I open the door it's going to swing over top of these feeders and not interfere with that so the next part what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the door and uh, you'll see that what I want to do is I want the door to overlap this hole so what you want to do is you want to measure halfway down one of these squares, which is a half an inch. And you measure up to where you're, it's going to be 10 inches. So we're covering this part. You want it to overlap so you don't get raccoons and things like that to reach into the, into the wire. So if I go 10 inches, I you might want to go a little longer on the sides so that you got something to hold it and to clip and for your hinges. So you might want to go two inches on both sides. So what I want to have at least is a 19, oh, I would say probably 18, at least 18 and a half or 18 inch by 10 inch door. All right, we'll pause that and I'll cut that out and show you about the door. Okay, so I, I cut this wire out and I bent these over so you don't get scratched. Now, what I did is I measured half an inch below the opening, half an inch below the opening and about two inches on both sides of this. So that's what gave me this door here. So what I want to do is I want to put this door on so that it misses the tops of these feeders. So I don't have to keep moving things when I go to feed. Now what I'm using is what they call a J-clip. You can see the shape of it. You make a special pair of pliers. You set them just like that in the pliers. Then you take your bottom and you put one clip right down below so it's at the half inch mark. Then you go to your top and do the same thing. And you squeeze the pliers, and there you go. Just like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right up this, and these little J-clips are going to make a hinge for the door. Now what I want to do is I want to keep the... I want to keep the door from sliding back down where it scrapes the tops of these. So I'm going to push up as far as I can on that bottom and where you've got 
a little bit more hinge area there go right above the top of that other hinge and now you've got a double a double clip there that'll keep it from sliding back down see now I'm not I'm not even going to scratch the tops of the feeders now what I want to do is I just want to keep going along and about every two inches and put another clip in <coughs> so it gives it strength That'll keep any raccoons, possums, any cats, anything that's trying to get into your animals. Bigfoot, whatever is, whatever bothers you. But you see how nice and strong that's making that hinge? Just by adding those little extra little clips every two inches. Should be the last one I need. And now with this being a double clip to hold that up, this one here at the bottom, got a nice swinging door. So now what you use, I'm not sure what they call them, but they're for on your doors. And you put J clips on these also. That way you can hook your hook your doors so that they latch. Now what they they have little wire things here. You put them down behind the the wire like that, and then you put a clip. And I'm going to put a top clip and a bottom clip. That way, nothing's going to get their little, little mungy fingers in there to try to open your, your cage. Like I said, if you're going to use it for rabbits or whatever, same thing. Just make sure your wire clips are on there and this part sticks out. So what you want to do is you want to take a put one in here. Just like that, just kind of hold it for now. Put another one right above that one. And you want to make sure it's on the door, not clipped to your cage. Or you'll never get your door open. Okay, now this is like this here. And you can put one here, just like that. And put one on the top. That helps keep it straight. Four or five on this and you can't go wrong and this is the part you're going to be using is like like a spring to grip it like that so you're going to want to have as many on there as you can like this one here I'm going to put right on the top just have to make sure you get your wire and your your clip Just like that, see? Those four clips will hold your whole hinge or your whole clip on there. Now I got these off an of eBay. You could probably get them at a, a farm store like Tractor Supply or anything like that. Clip them tight and they don't. Uh, interfere with your now if you had them this side they clip this way but if your door is open in this way you pretty much have to turn it the other way so you're clipping up it under but either way your animals aren't going to get caught on it okay, 
it just like that. Put your clips on it the same way you did your top one. I always start from the bottom and you go up. One. Do the next one about in here. towards the top of the ring. Let's make sure you get your wire and your ring at the same time. Good and tight. So now, that's good. Keep anything from getting up on top of here and trying to reach into your coil. Now the thing to do, once that's on there, bend your wire to a bow and it'll fit tighter to your cage. Like that. So then when you close it and you put this hook on there, that's definitely tight now. Like that. So always bow your wire. And that's so much for this side of the cage. I'll get my measurements and I'll do the wood, the wooden door and everything. I'm going to do that tomorrow. Right now I'm going to take a, a cold water break and get something cold to drink. And as you can see now, this part is complete. You can use it for rabbits or quail or chickens or baby chicks or anything. This will also keep your neighbor cats out of it, dogs, and it's plenty sturdy. You gotta make your hole for your feeder. It's if these you're using this inch wire like I did, it's 10 by 2. And then these slide right in there. Right on. Then you can open them up, dump your feet in there. What I have planned to do with this because these are set up for rabbits, I'm going to take some aluminum flashing and I'm going to go right down on the inside and wrap it right around this so that the feed doesn't fall out. Then I'm going to take some more of this inch wire because quail can get their head through here. And I'm going to layer that right down in the bottom. That way, because quail like to throw the feed. And if they've only got a little bit they can eat, they'll eat before they throw it. So this will this will save excuse me, this will save me some feed. And it's only going to take me a little time and effort to put the aluminum in there and the wire on top of it. And all I have to do is hook it up. There you go. <laughs> Trying to work with you a little bit on this stuff. It's not rocket science. And uh, anybody can really do it if they put their mind to it. There's no sense having somebody else build it for you. Not when you can do things like this yourself. And I'm just rehashing this old rabbit cage for quail. Once I get this front built, I can put the quail in there and worry about working on the, the wider end afterwards. They'll have plenty of shade 
plenty of water, and plenty of time put into it. All right, this is Clay for Bubble Backyard Farm saying, remember, big or small, you too can be a backyard farm. Bye-bye and join us again. Bye-bye.